don't quit this is part two and we started talking last week because of time i might not be able to recap all that we looked at last week but um we said don't quit instead of quitting you should rest you should reflect the big question we were trying to answer last week is what do you do when your results don't reflect your effort or when you have done all that you know to do but nothing seems to be working what do you do at that time the temptation is to quit the temptation is to give up okay even the bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick and when you get to that point where it looks like nothing is working i have tried my best okay you you want to give up you want to throw in the towel but i said to you and i'm saying to you again this evening don't quit don't give up rest reflect one big idea we shared last week is that you never make a permanent decision with negative emotions never make a permanent decision with negative emotions so i told you to clarify your motive okay see as you rest and reflect okay take out that time as long as you need okay take out that time to clarify your motive okay make sure you are not doing the right things for the wrong reasons all right i told you number two review your goals sometimes the reason why we struggle the reason why sometimes we are pursuing things and we can't seem to lay hold on on them perhaps is because the goals that we have set for ourselves are unrealistic goals so i told you to review your goals are they unrealistic goals or are they stretch goals okay unrealistic goals are goals that are beyond your le current level of performance in other words right now in this season you don't have the capacity to achieve them to attain them those kind of goals when you set them for yourselves they, i mean for yourself they end up okay discouraging you they end up undermining you they end up i mean discouraging even your team and the people that are working with you so you want to make sure that you are not setting unrealistic goals for yourself i said you need to set for yourself what i call stretch goals what makes it a stretch goal it is within reach but a little beyond your reach it is possible it's attainable but then a little beyond your reach in other words it is something you need to just stretch a little to attain when you attain it then you turn that next level to the stepping stone for the next level okay you see i like that statement that says that life is in phases and men are in sizes life is in phases and men are in sizes okay the third thing i advised you to do last week is to make necessary adjustments and that that's where we stopped last week make necessary adjustments i told you that when the right formula leads you to the wrong answer check your steps because delays and difficulties are like the check engine light on the dashboard of your car they are telling you something is wrong a lot of the times it's not the obstacles that are the problem it is our refusal okay or our failure to adjust that is the problem okay and i shared with you that it is not insanity to keep doing the same thing but expect a different result or expect while you expect a different result said so that's resilience real insanity is resilience without adjustment real insanity is resilience without adjustment because i mean so what we're saying is not enough for you to just keep at it you know just keep making effort upon making effort upon making effort no that's not the way it's going to work every time you fail there's feedback in your failure when you refuse to adjust you will not achieve the right results and interestingly at the end of the broadcast last week one of my very very committed followers abiodun okay put posted a comment on youtube and then he asked that i speak further on adjustments i didn't take it you know seriously but then after about two or three days uh it, it began to occur to me maybe where a lot of us struggle is with adjustment so as we continue with the topic don't quit allow me to focus this evening on adjustment so we're going to talk further on adjustments tonight then next week wednesday we will focus on how to deal with setbacks how to deal with discouragement okay next week wednesday but i want to share this thought with you i stumbled on this online and i found it very very inspiring it's a quote by thomas edison he said our greatest weakness lies in giving up 
the most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Let's read it together again. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. I agree with Thomas Edison, but what I am saying is yes, you are going to try again and that is what you need to do. You know, sometimes all we need to do is just to outlast our storms. Sometimes all we need to just, I mean, to just, just, I mean, to do is just dig our heels in, okay, and stay with the process stubbornly until we get our desired result. But my message to you tonight is this. Before you try again, please make the right adjustments, okay? Before you try again, please make the right adjustments. I'm inspired by the words of King Solomon where he wrote in Proverbs 29 and verse 1. Let's read it together. He said, He who hardens his neck and refuses instruction after being often reproved, which means corrected or criticized, will suddenly be broken without repair. Let's read it again. He who hardens his neck and refuses to listen or rather refuses instruction after being often reproved that is corrected or criticized will suddenly be broken beyond repair you see when we get to that point where we say i have tried everything everybody knows i have tried i am tired i have i give up okay and, and i'm, I'm and, and, and even though this might you know be as as simple as just walking out of a relationship or quitting a job for some other person it can be as overwhelming as giving up on life okay many people have suicidal tendencies some the thoughts are so overwhelming that they even carry it out and you need to understand it comes out of this little little everyday issues that we are dealing with but what Solomon is saying is that you may be playing a part in this overwhelming experiences that you have. And it is that if you fail to make adjustments over a long period of time, you will get to a certain point where it's like the point of no return. It's not because you cannot make amends, but it is because you have allowed, okay, the pressure of negative emotions to build against you. Why? You did not make the right adjustments. Okay, you did not make the right adjustments. You see, at the beginning of your journey, it is easy to turn around. But if you allow yourself to go in the wrong direction for too long, sometimes turning around becomes more difficult. So, the person who hardens his neck and refuses instruction after being often reproved, that is, after he's been corrected severally, he refuses to listen. He's been criticized severally. He refuses to listen. Solomon says such a person will just will be broken suddenly without repair or beyond repair. What happens suddenly, okay, really did not happen suddenly. It is actually the result of a long period of time where the person did not make the right adjustments. So please, I want you to take it from me this evening. Respond okay, to the feedback that failure is giving you. Respond to the feedback that difficulties are giving you. I like the scripture that says the way of the transgressor is hard. When you are making effort and things seem to be unusually difficult for you, don't just blame it on the environment. Don't just blame it on other people. Don't just blame it on even maybe you, you have a bad luck, okay? Sit down and make the right adjustments and that's what we're talking about this evening i want to be, share some thoughts that i believe strongly will help you to make the right adjustments in your life now listen to this big idea adjustments requires clarity adjustment requires clarity what do i mean you need a clear unbiased evaluation of your current position okay without bias without denial without any negative or overly positive emotion you need to be able to tell yourself the truth this is where i am for you to make the right adjustments you need to be clear okay adjustments or adjustment requires 
clarity. Now listen to the top. Now there are three big ideas, okay? Uh, and that's the first one. The second one is this. To gain clarity, you need light. So first I said adjustment requires clarity. Now, to gain clarity, you need light. What is light? Accurate, relevant, and timely information. Okay, I want you to follow me closely as, as I build my, build my case this evening. Adjustment requires clarity. You need a clear, unbiased evaluation of your current position. To do that, you need light. Okay, to gain, to gain clarity, you need light. What is light? Accurate, relevant, and timely information. You need, you need to know what the market is saying. You need to know what your customers are saying. You need to know what the people that you are doing life with is saying. You need to know the feedback that life is giving you. So the information, the light you need to make the right decisions, to make the right adjustment has to be accurate, has to be relevant, and has to be timely. The third big idea, okay, okay, that I want to share with you is this one. It takes humility to embrace light. Okay? It takes humility to embrace light. And I'm going to give you one statement that summarizes everything I've been saying. But, but let's build it now. Adjustment requires clarity. To gain clarity, you need light. It takes humility, okay, to embrace light. What do I mean? Big egos struggle with adjustments. If you are truly going to adjust, if you are going to respond to the feedback that life has been throwing your way, has been sending your way, you need clarity. To gain clarity, you need light. To embrace light, you need humility. That's the truth. So many people, the reason why we are not making the right adjustment is when feedback comes, we respond, okay, we're defensive, all right, our egos are big. How we feel is more important to us than, than truth. Okay, than the facts that are staring us in the face. See, when 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 you are the kind of person where bad facts make you feel bad, good facts make you feel good, you can't make the right adjustments. See, because when and well, another thing is when you're the kind of person where you cannot separate yourself from what you do. You need to always remember that you are not what you do. That's the reason why you can improve on what you do. So when there's negative feedback about what you do, you need to realize that the negative feedback is about what you did. It's not about you. Okay, you are a seed. You are a creature of immense potential. You have the capacity to keep growing and evolving till you become the best version of yourself. For that to happen, feedback will come. So when feedback comes, you need to understand, I'm not my idea, I'm not my performance, I am valuable, but for me to produce greater results, I need to make adjustments. For me to make those adjustments, I need to respond to feedback. So when feedback comes, that it's not me that is being criticized, it is what I did because I have the capacity to do better. Even when you are very, doing very good, when the feedback is that you are doing good, you can't afford to let it get to your head because that's not who you are. You can always do better. Now, this is the summary of what I've been trying to say to you up until this moment. To gain clarity, pay attention to feedback from data, critics, and stakeholders. Okay? To gain clarity, Pay attention to feedback from data, critics, and stakeholders. And I'm going to unpack, okay, the three of them for you, one after the other. To gain clarity, you've got to pay attention to data, critics, and stakeholders. So let's start with data. First, you must realize that good intentions are not good enough, okay? Good intentions are not good enough. That is why data does not lie data does not have vested interest okay data simply just shows you things the way they are and what i am saying is sometimes when when feedback comes our way we judge ourselves by our intention so we don't receive feedback because what what the feedback is saying is different from what we intended to achieve but you need to understand that data is impersonal so whatever data is telling you remember data does not lie 
Okay, for example, if you, you plan a program and you, you wanted about 500 people to be in the room and say you invested maybe about 500,000, I'm just using this as a hypothesis, um, in, on advertisement. And at the end of the day, instead of 500 people in the room, you have 50 people. What data is telling you is it might not be the money that is the problem. It might be your strategy. It may be the platform where you advertised, but what feedback is telling you, what the data is telling you is the work you put in and the money you put in, 50 people is what it could get or 100 people is what it could get. Okay. Don't look at the results you have or what data is telling you and judge yourself by your intentions or your desires and be frustrated. No, data does not lie. Data does not have vested interest. Okay. Data is impersonal as it is, is the way data is going to reveal it to you. So you want to pay attention to what data is saying. All right. You want to pay attention to numbers, whatever the numbers are, believe the numbers and respond to what the numbers are telling you. Let me give an example. Say somebody wants to lose about 10 kg in the next three months. Okay. Every, every time you stand on your scale, data does not fly. So, for example, you may feel, oh, I've been disciplined, I've been exercising, I've, I've missed a lot of meals, okay? By now, I should have lost 5 kg. When you stand on the scale and the scale says you have lost less than 1 kg, don't argue, don't be in denial, okay? Data does not lie. The second, all right, um, people or the second category of, of light Okay, in the, the second category of like, let me put it that way. You want to pay attention to are your critics. Okay, critics. Now, listen, if you can get past their negative energy, the best free advice and the best publicity you will ever receive is from a, a critic. Let me say that again. If you can get past their negative energy, okay, the best advice, best free advice, and the best publicity you will ever receive is from a critic. Let me tell you four things that critics are telling you. Number one, your critics are saying that you are doing something. It is feedback. Okay. People don't criticize people who are not doing something. Okay. Your critics are telling you, therefore, you matter. Your critics are telling you you exist. Your critics are telling you you have people's attention. Your critics are telling you we, we notice you. Okay. Sometimes you don't know that you are there. You don't know that you are touching people. You don't know that you are making a dent. See, your critics are telling you you are doing something. Number two, your critics will show you what you are doing right by focusing on what you are doing wrong. Let me say that again. Your critics will show you what you are doing right by focusing on what you are doing wrong. So when criticisms, I mean, criticism comes against you, you need to remember everything that they did not talk about are the things that you are doing right. Are you getting it now? Critics don't pay attention to where you excel. Critics by nature are focused on where you struggle or where you're doing wrong. So instead of getting overwhelmed by their negative energy or by their focus on your struggle or focus on your weakness, everything the weakness, I mean, the critic is not talking about is an area of strength. Number three, what they say that you are doing wrong, if you can respond to it with a positive attitude, listen, what they claim is wrong, okay, actually is potential. See, where the critic is focused on are areas of your life where you can make changes, where you can make, okay, improvement. Good. So all you need to do is take what they call wrong and change the word wrong to potential. Change the word wrong to possibilities. Let me give an example. Say you are in a meeting and somebody is evaluating your performance and then the person says, um, um, if, if only you could be you know, a bit, a bit simpler in the way you communicate. And if, if your document can, can, you know, you can employ simpler language, don't feel bad. What the person is saying is as far as communication is concerned, you have the potential for growth. Really critics are pointers to possibilities. Okay. Anything that cannot be changed naturally, people don't complain about people always complain about things that can be improved upon things that can get better. 
like I said, once you can get past their negative energy, then it is to your advantage because your critics, okay, are pointing into areas or pointing at areas where you can get better, where you can make improvement. And let me give you this one free of charge, okay? It's not part of my list, but let me quickly give it to you. Critics put you in the spotlight. Yes, they do it for the wrong reasons, but hey, who is in the spotlight? So you need to understand when criticism comes your way. Now, it's not part of the feedback I'm talking about. I just want to add this for you. When critics point people's attention to you, don't get carried away by the negative reason or intentions that they have. What you must realize is that you have people's attention. So critics put you in the spotlight. Once you have the spotlight, tell people what you want them to hear about you. It's amazing. You will hear politicians say it all the time. Okay. Celebrities say it all the time. There is nothing like bad publicity. Okay. You are the one that needs to leverage it to your advantage. The critic will point people in your direction thinking he's doing you wrong or he's trying to destroy you. But what you need to realize is you have people's attention. It is up to you now to do whatever it is that you want to do with it. That's why sometimes the cheapest advert, the cheapest publicity you will ever receive is from a critic. Now, what are we saying? We're saying to gain clarity, you've got to pay attention to feedback from data, from critics and from stakeholders. So let me talk to you about stakeholders. Now, these are people who are directly affected by your success or your failure. Okay. People who are directly affected by your success or your failure. These are st stakeholders in your life. They have your best interest. And if you will give them the opportunity, they can be brutally honest with you. They can tell you the truth. What are we saying? If, if you make the right adjustments, all right, you will get over those difficult seasons where you want to give up, where things are difficult, when you are not achieving results. Because like I said, difficulties, delays, they are just like the check engine light on your dashboard. They are just trying to tell you something is wrong. When you engage your stakeholders, they can look you in the face and tell you exactly what is wrong. But what I'm going to advise you to do is this. If you really want to make adjustments, if you really want to get better, you have to separate your person from your actions. And you've got to learn to empower your stakeholders. To say, tell me the way it is. Okay? Tell me the way it is. You need to understand that sometimes people who love you may have to hurt you in a bid to help you. But if you are the kind of person that cannot be wrong, then you cannot be better. Okay, if you cannot be wrong, you cannot be better. If people cannot point out where you flounder, then they cannot also point you in the direction where you will flourish. My message to you is this. When you make the right adjustments, you will succeed where you currently struggle. When you make the right adjustments, you will succeed where you currently struggle. I'm reminded of the story of David from the Bible. If you want to reference, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Okay, the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. There's an interesting story there. David gathered men from, from Israel, about 30,000 of them. Their mission was to bring the Ark of Covenant back to Jerusalem. In a bid to do it, they made a mistake. What had been written in the law that God gave their nation was that the Ark of Covenant was to be carried by a selected few people. All right. These people were here marked and consecrated for that assignment. But David and his guys felt like, let's do it our own way. So they got a cart driven by animals and then they put the Ark of Covenant on it. As they were going, the Ark, you know, was, was um, the, 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 the cart stumbled a bit. And then an authorized person, personnel um, decided to help the ark, put his hand to steady the ark, and the guy died. David was afraid. David was angry. So he aborted the mission and put the ark in the house of Obedidom for three months. In that period, the house of Obedidom was blessed. Now, the reason why David failed was because David was wrong. But when you read the story from verse 11, David adjusted. They came back. They did it again. But this time around, the ark was carried by the people that were supposed to carry the ark. And this time around, they succeeded. And what I'm saying to you, my listener, is that may be the case with most of us. 
the reason why it looks like things are not working, the reason why it looks like you're going from failure to failure, perhaps is because there are adjustments that you need to make. Some of us in our marriages may need to make adjustments. You cannot continue to treat your partner insensitively and expect things to work. You cannot treat your em employees, okay, shabbily and expect things to work. You cannot treat the work of your employer or treat the work of your customers, okay, in a negative way, in a bad way, and yet you want to succeed. As a matter of fact, you cannot continue to harbor negative thoughts in your mind and expect positive things to happen in your life. You need to make the right adjustments okay you need to make the right adjustments now please listen to me i am not saying that the fact that things are not working is your fault next week wednesday we are going to go further but we needed to come here first okay you need to understand there are things you need to do to overcome setbacks there are things you need to overcome to do to overcome delay but before we start doing those things of course one simple thing is for you to just try again sometimes all we need to do is just try again try again try again but instead of just trying again or before we try again and try again, we need to adjust first. And even before adjustment, you may need to rest. Okay, some of us are just burnt out. Some of us are just tired and you need to rest. Sometimes when you're overwhelmed with negative emotions, you can't even see the feedback when it's coming your way. People are talking to you. You can't even hear them. Okay, they're trying to let you know how you can improve and you can't even hear them. Listen, if you're in that state where it's difficult for you to be encouraged, it's difficult for you to be motivated. What you need is rest. Just back off. Rest. But don't quit. Don't make permanent decisions with negative emotions don't burn bridges yet don't don't make final statements yet don't resign yet don't quit the relationship yet rest reflect make the right adjustments then next week wednesday i will speak further on what you need to do to bounce back okay from setbacks from discouragement and to succeed in all your endeavors i want to stop there this evening and then we'll continue next week wednesday 